you'll, you'll be just fine. I eat carbs all the time and <laughs> picture of health. Jillian Michaels is a celebrity personal trainer. You probably know her from The Biggest Loser. She spoke out last week against keto, which isn't something new. She has spoke out against it before earlier last year, um, but the video she posted last week has blown up. So I know there's been several response videos to this. Mine's gonna be a little bit different. I'm not gonna actually watch the whole video through and react to it. I'm just gonna talk about a few of her main points she makes. Also gonna talk about why she's a pretty big hypocrite. And then we're gonna talk about why keto is so effective. Not only for losing weight, but for a million other reasons. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, low carb way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more, make sure to subscribe. So there's actually two videos that came out last week. One was from the YouTube channel called Big Think, and I think the other one was from Woman's Health Magazine. So let's start with the Big Think one. We'll skip through and kind of just touch on some of the points she makes. Already, just looking at the number of dislikes this video has, you can tell how people feel about it. And it throws your body into a state of emergency. That's what ketosis is. An emergency state. First off, Keto is a normal metabolic function. If we weren't able to create and use ketones for energy, we would die as soon as our glycogen stores ran out. Most people have low levels of ketones in their blood every morning when they wake up, just from fasting overnight. This is just what our bodies do when one fuel source is low. We switch to the other. Now, maybe she's mixing up ketosis with ketoacidosis. And the latter is really only a concern if you're a type 1 diabetic. To put it into perspective, ketoacidosis is when your blood ketone levels are higher than 11 millimolars. And most people eating a low carb or ketogenic diet are between 0.5 to 3. Some people might get a little bit higher than that, but no one is getting close to 11 unless you're a type 1 diabetic. There's no consideration of timing with regard to food, so your autophagy process is totally out of whack. Okay, what? Keto and intermittent fasting pretty much go hand in hand. So I don't really know what she's getting at when she says that keto has no regard for food timing. That's absolutely ridiculous. People doing keto are all about food timing. In this situation, I don't know if she's saying that autophagy is bad, because autophagy starts to happen when your glycogen stores run out. And this is achieved when you are eating a low carb diet or when you're fasting, which is what you're doing on keto. It can also start from exercising, but eating low carb and fasting are the best ways to kickstart it. And if you're not familiar, autophagy is basically when your cells start to break down and recycle other damaged cells this is one of the reasons that fasting and low carb diets in general are extremely effective for preventing disease. All the damaged cells that are floating around pretty much get cleaned up. So I don't know what she means by it throws your autophagy out of whack. In addition to that, it's very high in animal fats and animal proteins. <laughs> okay, so there is absolutely nothing wrong with eating more animal protein, with eating more animal fat. If you've watched any of my other videos, I'm sure you already know how I feel about this topic. There is no evidence at all that higher meat consumption leads to any disease. Studies that claim otherwise are done on large populations. They rely on self-surveying, so they send out a questionnaire every couple of weeks or every month, and they ask people to write down, how many times did you have fish? How many times did you have meat? How many serves of vegetables did you have on this day? Yeah. Not very accurate, first off because people have to try to remember what they ate every single day and remember the servings. And of course, doing it this way, people have a little bit of self-reporting bias, so they try to make themselves sound better. Oh yeah, I ate more vegetables. It's not accurate. 
These type of studies can show correlation, but they cannot show causation. Scientists are supposed to come out of these studies with a hypothesis, and then they further test that hypothesis in a randomized control trial. And there are no randomized control trials that prove that meat causes cancer, causes disease, causes diabetes, none. One really good example of another way that these type of studies can be completely twisted to just fit an agenda is this one done by a medical school in New York, I believe it was, and it was done over four years. They followed, I wanna say 14,000 people. And based on what they were eating, they put them into five different groups. Now, when I first saw this study, I read a headline article that said, a plant-based diet could help cut your risk of heart disease by 40%. And I was like, okay, let's look at the study. Just looking at it, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. So as I said, they separated people into five groups based on what they were eating. The first group was called convenience. And yeah, it included red meat, but also pasta, fried potatoes, and fast food. Okay, and then the plant-based category, dark leafy vegetables, fruits, beans, and fish. So plant-based wasn't even entirely vegan, it still included fish. And then Southern, there was eggs and organ meats. All right, fantastic, off to a great start. But then fried food, processed meats, and sugary drinks. How can you even put those things in the same category? but someone who is just reading this headline, they're looking at it and thinking, oh wow, I need to eat plant-based if I don't want to have a heart attack. Anyway, it's a bit of a rant there, let's get back to the video. The number one way to sensitize somebody's body again to insulin is exercise. Okay, yeah, I don't think this is true. Insulin resistance is largely due to what you're eating. When you eat any food, insulin is released, there is a lot more for carbohydrates than for fat or protein. So if you're eating a lot of carbs, if you're eating them consistently, more and more insulin is released, and this is what leads to insulin resistance. I do know that exercise can definitely help, but diet is for sure the number one way to improve insulin resistance. I've been doing this a heck of a long time. <laughs> I've reversed type 2 diabetes. I've helped people get off all medications for type 2 diabetes and PCOS and get pregnant after years of trying and failing through a common sense diet where we don't eat too much. We eat real food and we have balanced macronutrients. So I can give you all those benefits with none of the negative side effects of keto. Okay, and at this point in the video, she starts to talk a little bit more about all the people she's helped, how she has all the answers. And I think it's funny that she calls keto a fad diet because what she promotes is pretty much a fad diet. Eat less, exercise more. That's her whole strategy. Eat a balanced diet. That's what she says. But her strategy is not maintainable. I think it's something like 95% of participants from The Biggest Loser ended up gaining all or more of the weight back. How are you gonna say that something you promoted, that something you walked people through, that ended up with them in an even worse position, is the answer? Yes, calories in, calories out is true in theory, but in reality, it isn't that simple. When you eat very few calories over a period of time, your body goes, okay, I'm getting less calories to work with, I need to adjust so that I'm burning less. And this is pretty much how your metabolism slows down. There's also no way to accurately know how many calories you're burning or consuming for that matter. So to try to break it down into this nice, simple formula, it's just ridiculous. It doesn't work. The reason that keto works better for weight loss over a traditional balanced or high carb diet is number one, it is extremely satiating. Fat and protein are, this is proven, <laughs> more satiating than carbohydrates. They keep you fuller for longer and give you more consistent energy. When you're eating carbs all day long, your energy is just spiking and crashing, spiking and crashing. And when it crashes, you get cravings, you get hungry, you get moody, you get hangry, and you wanna eat. So keto 
makes eating less, less painful. And number two, it also allows your body to tap into your stored body fat. This mechanism gets cut off when insulin is high. So again, if you're eating carbs all day long, you're never gonna be able to tap into your stored body fat. So basically, you aren't as hungry, you feel better, you're losing weight, there's no increased disease risk, actually the opposite, it's effective for disease prevention. How she can say that this is a fad diet and not effective, not healthy, it's just beyond me. And she also talks about how a balanced diet is key. All you have to do is eat less, exercise more, eat all the macronutrients, what is balance? Who came up with it? This is the strategy that we have been following for the last 40, 50 years, and it's not working. And that is proof by the obesity rates, by the diabetes rates, chronic illness in general. And sure, you can blame all of these things on fast food, processed food, and yeah, that is a huge chunk of the problem. But what are these foods? They are mainly processed carbs, processed sugar, which is carbs, and toxic oils. And another reason I think it's pretty funny that she says keto is not sustainable and that it's a fad diet is because she literally has a line of supplements that increase your metabolism, fat burning supplements, detox pills. What are these? Surely you're not promoting these and selling them because they are sustainable. She calls keto a quick fix and says that you're gonna lose weight fast but you're gonna have all these other negative symptoms and whatnot and she criticizes keto for being just a quick solution. But, okay, really? <laughs> Anyways, my final thoughts are that keto goes against everything she has ever promoted. It goes against all the books she's written. Just all of her life's work pretty much. So she's here trying to use her status to discredit it. And I'm so glad that so many people are seeing through it. She doesn't understand keto. She's not even trying to understand it. She's just using her celebrity status to discredit it. And the other thing I thought was hilarious is she was in a video at the start of 2017 making a keto smoothie and pretty much being like, oh yeah, keto can be done healthy. All right, hey guys, Dr. Josh Axer along with Jillian Michaels. Wait, hey, good. I oh. thought I was the Jillian. Well, you are the Jillian Michaels. What happened? So. I got demoted in our, from video. I thought video. I'd mix it up. I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. <laughs> okay. So the Jillian Michaels, and today we're making a chocolate keto smoothie. It's so good. And so we've talked about keto. <sighs> Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, head over to Facebook, join my Facebook group. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.